friends, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Yvonne and you are on Ginger Chick Rehab where I love to take secondhand finds and give them new life. So in today's video, it is a trash to treasure. These are those unwanted items that sometimes not everybody sees the same vision that I do. So I'm going to share my vision today with you. This floral arrangement has seen better days, that is for sure. But you have to look past that to see this beauty. Personally, I'm a fan of stars, and then to have one that holds florals, wow. But after getting it cleaned up with just some Dawn dish soap, some hot water, it's got scrapes, it's got boo-boos, and it's got glitter that just will not come off. So I'm going to give it a new coat of paint just using the black flat in the Rust-Oleum's Enamelware paint. I like this paint because it dries in 15 minutes. Still in awe of how pretty this is. So it already has a hanging system. It's nicely, freshly painted. So let's get some florals. Okay, well, I'm not really adding florals. I'm going to be adding some pit berries, but I need to cut my floral foam to kind of match <laughs> that triangle. And then to hide the green of the floral foam, I'm just going to use some of this brown crinkle grass stuff. I always seem to be able to thrift it. I know the dollar store sells similar, or you can make your own if you have a shredder. I just love these pit berries. They're from Hobby Lobby. They're in that section that has succulents and other little stems like this that are never on sale, but I really like them. And they seem to go with a lot of the decor that I repurpose. So first of all, I take off the tag and then I like to cut them off the stem. I really find that you get the most use and you can make your arrangement full if you cut them off the stems. So a nice pair of nippers always comes in handy. My first piece, I just cut most of the stem off. I'm going to make it a little bit fuller and then I'm going to cut one down each individually to make a full. They really spread out quite nice and they stick into that floral foam wonderfully. Now these will be a little bit on the shorter side so I'll I'll make sure that I put a little bit of hot glue to re-ensure that they're going to stay in place. I have my berries the way that I want them. I'm going to cut apart this rusty stem. I, I, this came in a thrift haul. I absolutely love rusty stars, so I thought this would really tie in with the brown of the color of the stems of the pit berry. We've got the star theme going on of the hanger, so what a wonderful thing to add a little bit more visual to. Keeping with that primitive theme, I'm just adding a little bit of this home spun fabric to tie it all together. This was a really fun and easy makeover just using what items I had in my stash. So here are three secondhand finds from a thrift store, a metal star, a gray fine wreath, and a very bluish turquoise <laughs> wooden star. So I'm going to actually connect the three together. So first off, I'm going to go ahead and spray up. Though it's a very fun, bright color, I just want to give it my own little twist. And the easiest way to spray to do this is to be able to spray it. And the enamel wear spray works just as fine on wood as it does metal or resin or anything like that. But being able to spray to get into all those together pieces is just the easiest. And I sprayed this little brown metal star also though, you, uh, you know, I thought I hit my camera. I hate when that happens. But anyway, I'm going to give it some aged patina. So I'm using the Dixie Bells patina paint in the iron. So I'm just using a makeup sponge from the, the Dollar Tree store to apply it just doing a dabbing technique. I want to make this look like it has been aged metal. So dabbing is a little bit better than brushing on. 
Both sides have been sprayed. I'm going in and distress it. And I know, I know, I know some of that turquoise is going to show through and it'll be okay. I just want to look a little bit more weathered that freshly painted. Okay, so this little metal star ties in. I did two coats of the iron paint and then after that, I'm going in with just the blue patina paint. So that should give it that blue color that is going to go ahead and match the turquoise that's popping through from underneath that wooden star. Did you know if you re-wet a grapevine wreath, you can take it apart and reuse it and shape it to what you need. So my vision is for some thinner grapevine, not such a thick reef like this. So all I do, doesn't matter the temperature of water, you just soak it. So I usually let it soak a good 15, 20 minutes before working with it and taking it apart. There's usually this outer piece that has been wrapped around to keep all the grapevine together. So I'm going to go ahead and that's almost for the stars I'm using that usable piece. And I, a lot of times it's been weaved in and you end up having to cut it off. So it's just, just part of, you know, the leftover pieces, but the yummies is this right here is what I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start pulling it apart while it's still wet. And then I will get like the pieces that I want, the smaller pieces. See how quickly it really is so simple to take a grapevine wreath apart. And then why, again, why it's still damp, it still has moisture in it, it's still bendable, it's not going to snap when you bend it. I start making a smaller circle of the grapevine wreath. Now this had some hot glue residue, so you'll see me picking it off here and there. It's a thrifted grapevine wreath. It is what it is. <laughs> so I'm just going to start making my smaller circle and then stapling it onto my star. Look at the yummy patina this created. So see how that blue turquoise of the patina spray matches the little bit of blue that's coming through on this black star. Oh my goodness. So now I had to figure out because when you do these wooden stars, you have to find the level part. So sometimes where you want to put an item, it isn't always possible. <laughs> You kind of have to work with what you have. Um, so I had to play with it around a little bit because I really wanted it hanging out a little bit more on the grapevine, but I needed to attach it securely. So all I did was take some brad nails and brad nail it through the metal so it was nice and secure. Hot glue I just didn't trust for this outside type of item, but I am taking some of the Fusions chocolate paint and covering up those nice shiny staples that I put in there. You don't want anybody seeing. You want them to know that you held it in, but you don't want those to stand out. think it's funny when you find a sets of things though I'm using the same grapevine wreath you find more metal stars what's the chances in the same week finding two wooden stars oh but look at that beautiful this was actually made out of barn wood so I I am actually not painting this. <laughs> I am not painting it. Though I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to go ahead and sand and see if I can get it's like a white spray paint that was eh, a little bit questionable on the spray paint. Um, so I really just want it to look like that old chippy barn and how quickly this is achieving it. Though I am going to paint that star black. It's just a great base, a great primer color.
going to be using that same Dixie Belle Spatina paint in the iron. Yes, I spray painted both sides. So, you know, if you see it from the back, I guess, you know, it's just my, my little, my little thing that I do. But anyway, yes, going ahead and just using that same makeup sponge dabbing it on. I really like the dabbing technique because I really think it gives that true patina look. And yes, you really always need two coats. The first one is just getting it on there. The second one will grab more paint and really cover a little bit better. This star, I'm going to use the green patina spray. And what this is going to do is going to give it that rust look. So just a nice spray and then let it sit off to the side and do what it does. But I did the same exact thing, taking apart a piece of the grapevine wreath why it's still wet working with that. I love the chippy white paint, though I could have put it on the barn wood. Also, I really like that chippy white paint because I think it really makes the grapevine pop. If I would have put it on the other side, it, may, it would have been okay, but it just wouldn't have popped as much. You have all grabbed this when you saw this when you're out thrifting. I snagged it right off a fresh cart. I don't care that it's broken, that it's missing its lid. It's absolutely gorgeous. $58, the original price. Ouch. But anyway, the black is wonderful. I love the white that accents all the details. So all I need to do is get these tags removed, get this cleaned up, and put some greenery in it. Gonna be using the Dollar Tree Floral Foam. Love this stock up at any time I'm running low and I'm at a dollar store. But this is pretty deep. I don't want to fill this up with floral foam just to put some greenery in it. So I'm just going to take some of my contractor's paper. It's just like a paper bag, and I'm going to stuff it in the bottom to fill that void. And now I will fill it up with some of the floral foam. Now, I don't use any hot glue when I put floral foam in there. That way somebody who buys it can change out the flowers. But I do make sure that everything is nice and tight. And at first I'm like, oh, I'll stand them up. But then that would have been too tall and I would have needed to cut them. I just need something to stick my stems in. For my greenery choice, well, it's more floral. Um, I'm using up, I have quite a hoard of the lavender from Walmart from three different years. So... Um, I'm going to be mixing it. I really like the mix of it and it sells well mixing these different colors and the variations of the lavender and I always like to cut them off the original stems to make my floral, my greenery just nice and full. So I always start off with um, just starting to work from the center and then working my way out with one of the different types and just kind of arranging them like in the threes and then twos in the front. I really, um, I, like I said, I like them to be nice and full and it's so easy with the floral foam with the wired stems to stick them right in there. That I have my two different colors in there. When you, uh, snip these apart from the original stem you can just move them and make your arrangement just so full so now i'm going in and i'm taking this larger lavender and i won't have to add too much because my base is nice and full i just want to add some variance some height to it
is the chances of finding another one of these post boxes? But this one has the lid this time. But that paint job, I, I don't... I don't really know. I don't I like that turquoisey, but I don't do not like the how they accented it at all. So yes, this one is going to be getting a makeover. Now I do like the turquoise color, but I do not have any of that color in my stash. So I'm gonna start off by after getting this all washed off, dust dawn dish soap, hot water, making sure that it's thoroughly dry. I don't know how I missed that sticker but we'll we'll take care of that <laughs> but i'm spraying it with a nice coat of the rust-oleum's enamel water paint this will be a great primer color and get that inside to be a just a general black i'd want to have fun with color so i ordered this sweet pickens milk paint in the pickle color yes for a piece of furniture that i just haven't got to but i thought this would be a great project piece to try it out on a smaller piece before i use it on a large furniture piece so it's equal parts so i just have a scoop that i thrifted or came with the auction hall um that way it's just easier to measure so i mixed i'm mixing up two because i wasn't sure if um one scoop would be enough and then it's equal parts the the powder and then you add water to it you stir it for two minutes you kind of let it sit up and thicken until it gets a nice consistency like pancake um batter and then you just start applying it so it will be runny so it, uh, you want to start off at the top of your project first and let it run down it's not one of those where you really brush heavy you just kind of kind of like painting on top of the Elmer's glue crackle paint you just want to get the paint on lots of paint on your brush so you don't see brush strokes and just yep just just get it on <laughs> Thing about milk paint is it is an old timey paint it's supposed to make an item look aged so you'll get random crackles you get just that aged of a beautiful old paint job I did add a second coat to spots that i thought i saw too much black but remember it runs so the bottom of it um could be quite messy but so i'm going to try to wipe off as much as i can if i can if not i'll go ahead and paint it because if you are regular to my channel you know i like every part of my item to look nice so i'm going to take the time to wipe anything that i can get off and i'll end up repainting it and it did drip a little bit in the inside but i'll just respray that but i just absolutely love the patina paint that this milk paint i am really impressed with this milk paint you can sand milk paint, but I am not going to because I don't want to get down to my metal. But I do want to make those details pop just a little more. And Jolie's Black Wax will do that job. So I just put, it's like a dry brush technique. It's just minimal. It You know, a little bit of black goes a long way. So I just want to get those to um, pop. I already sprayed the inside of this where you can kind of see where it is a little bit wet still where some of the runs happened but really it was minimal that went inside but there's some deep tail on the top of course I want to pop that too. Fill the rest of this piece in I am just going to be using some very thin in the natural wax it's a clear wax this paint is really dry and it soaked that black wax in really nice so I don't have any worries about going over that with some natural wax it will just seal this in and give it that nice soft finished feeling.
pick this little piggy, a little piggy with wings, a flying piggy from my local Goodwill. Um, it had been re-glued. Somebody had tried to sell it maybe in their booth or at something, but I, it, it could use a paint job. It could use a paint job to cover up that wing where it had been outside and was dirty, probably sun faded. So we are going to get this little guy cleaned up. I have him cleaned and primed. Yes, I had some leftover of that green, so I, I wasn't planning on throwing him in this video, but I don't like to waste product by any means, so I always look at my stash and see what else I can make over, and I really wanted to get this little piggy done, and I think he'll be gorgeous in this pickle color, and he has those details. I think will crackle beautifully. It's a great way to hide that um, patch job on his broken wing. It was, it was a nice and secure patch job. Unfortunately, you could just see it if you didn't paint over it. It's the same thing because it runs, the bottom is kind of a hot mess, but that's okay. I can get that cleaned up. And if you noticed when I was using the milk paint, I was constantly stirring it to get the yummies off the bottom. The powder does kind of, you know, kind of like pancake batter. It sits at the bottom. So while you're using it, um, you want to keep stirring it. So this one actually cleaned up, I thought good enough that I didn't need to paint the bottom. It's a perfectly and perfect paint job. It is not meant to be complete coverage. You want the runs. You want to see that underneath paint. That's why I started off with the black base. You want it to crackle. You just you want it to do all those wonderful things that normal aged paint does. So for this one, I'm just sealing it in with the Verithane Clear Wax. There's not really enough details. Um, I mean, I could have gone in, but... Um, I think with the resin, I just, I thought that there was enough of that black showing that I didn't need to add any of the black wax to it. so I had so much fun you know just from the simple of doing that little star metal star vase was just as unique I've never seen something like that to putting florals in a mailbox to using that pickle color milk paint oh I will be ordering some more of that I or I've tried other milk paint before but I I'm really I did like okay well I've used one other milk paint before but anyway I really did like how that pickle color, the how that Sweet Pickens milk paint worked really well. Um, it's nice to test it out on smaller items before I go and you do it on a big item. So absolutely love that. And just sh sharing with you the simplicity of somebody, you know, getting rid of stars, metal stars, wooden stars, putting those two stars together and how to take apart and recycle and reuse a grapevine wreath. What a great idea. So give me a quick comment down below, which of my makeovers were your favorite and have I inspired you to look at secondhand finds in a new way. Again, you all, if you were part of our YouTube family, thank you so much. It just warms my heart every time I read one of your just kind compliments, your kind comments. And if you're new and you're checking out this channel for the first time and you liked what you saw and you love crafts, DIYs, furniture flips, secondhand finds, hit that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know we've uploaded a new video and we will see you next time guys and you can see what we're up to bye